You know what Montreal is, right? Weird, French, two million people living in a river. Or is it four million people living around a river? Or 1.5 million people living in a city on an island in a river? The fact that no one can agree on what Montreal is leads to a lot of confusion and a plethora of political problems. So let's tear it apart. With a population of zero, the smallest interpretation of what is Montreal is ye old volcano, Mont Royal. Marked with a cross. Proving that mountain is a relative term, this hill anywhere else is where Montreal gets its name. Now we're pretty used to seeing contractions and names like yellow knife or white horse. Not to be confused as only one of them is home to my best friend in the whole world. The guy I miss more than anything since moving to Montreal, Airport Polar Bear. Oh. But back to a town I haven't become a pariah in yet. If a town is named after the mountain, why has the town contracted to Real where the mountain is Royal? Shouldn't it be called Mont Royal? Gross. Looks weird. Well, the whole place was named after an archaic French spelling of Royale, which I've been told is still the way that uh, Spanish people say uh, Royale, but I haven't checked that. I have enough on my plate with all the French in this video. When modern French decided to use the word Royale, Royale which the mountain got the etymological update, but for the town, the fusion of a word into the name means that we're stuck with it. So now you can see all of Montreal from Mont Royal. A little confusing, but we haven't even started. The next conceivable candidate for what could be Montreal is the town of Montreal. Of course, everyone from Montreal will be like, what, stupid. But imagine that you're me in 2010 and you've never been to Montreal and you're looking at a map. I can actually remember seeing it on the map and thinking, guess that must be the old center of town. This wealthy, weird municipality of 20,000 people was set up by Canadian Northern Railways to help financing the Montreal Tunnel. Town of Montreal, now just a few subterranean minutes from downtown. It's interesting that 120 years later, the Rem Chambly extension could be built on the same model. Build an expensive transit project, finance it with real estate that suddenly become more valuable along the route. Century later, model still works. The town of Montreal was and always has been a wealthy and independent municipality to the Montreal which it is buried in. That's right, the town of Montreal is not in the Ville de Montreal. What? I'll try to explain this with the next size up of what is Montreal. So the Ville de Montreal is in my opinion the first serious contender for what is Montreal. The Ville de Montreal is a municipality by the way, no one calls it the city of Montreal, so you don't get with a French in this one or no one's gonna know what you're talking about. It's amazing air traffic control center, passenger terminal, fantastic fold down jetways and a seriously secret express tunnel. And that's not all. The Ville de Montréal municipality is huge. It contains 19 arrondissements. I think all of these were separate municipalities at one time or another, but gradually traded their independent municipality status for an arrondissement status in the Ville de Montréal. The Ville de Montréal is represented by what I thought at first was the Apple icon. <laughs> Kind of an awesome, timeless design. The Ville de Montréal covers most of the island. Yes, that's right, most, not all. In addition to the town of Montréal, it doesn't contain Westmount, Beaconsfield, Dorval, and quite a few other places. Actually, the, the most confusing thing is it doesn't contain Montreal East or Montreal West, but does it contain Montreal North? Of course it does! <laughs> Who signed off on this map? Well, the citizens of each municipality did. In the early 2000s, the Parti Quebecois decided to do big municipal marriages across all of Quebec. Up until that time, the island of Montreal and the small satellite islands had 27 different municipalities, with just one of them being the OG Montreal. The result of this was all the municipalities on the island were merged into one, the Ville de Montréal. Then, after campaigning to do this, and then winning, the Liberal Party held a referendum. The marriage was off, but it was a very messy divorce. Some of the municipalities stayed in and some of them left. The line that I've heard for years was the ones that left did so because they were English speaking enclaves. But after looking at the data, I think that it was probably more because they were rich. Sure, they did tend to be English, but the average income in the Ville de Montréal is around 40K, whereas the average income in those non-merged municipalities is more like 70. I think they were probably thinking, hey, we took good care of our roads, and we don't want to pay to fix other people's roads in these other neighborhoods. A bit of that classic interplay between the haves and the have-nots. You know, same one you get with 
progressive taxation, for example, an argument that humanity will probably still be having when we're deciding how to build roads on fucking Mars. So all said and done, the population of Ville de Montréal is 1.7 million. But when I asked people on Twitter, only 5.9% of people said that they considered this to be Montreal. The next size up is what most people I asked thought that Montreal is. Yeah, I know, the thing the Parti Québécois decided Montreal is. It's the island of Montreal. Now, it can be a bit confusing because if you were to say that Montreal was just the island, well, already the Ville de Montréal is both more and less than just the island. The Ville de Montréal includes both satellite islands of Nuns Island and Bizarre. Bizarre. But these are only about 20,000 so a piece, so it's not too important. And I almost forgot, Ile de Val, which adds five more residents to uh, Montreal's total. So if we add all these islands to the island of Montreal, this is called the Agglomeration de Montréal. Now it makes sense that this is what most people think Montreal is. If Montreal was the Ville de Montréal, then Montreal doesn't even have an airport because that's in Deauville. It also means that Montreal East and Montreal West and the town of Montreal are back on the team. And at the very least, it made enough sense for one provincial government to decide that that is what Montreal is. It's also a pretty convenient boundary. The separation and constraint of a river will always make the island a different place to the land around it. It has to be denser because it can't grow out. The island is also really huge, so you could theoretically go your whole life without leaving it if you wanted to. So this grouping is overseen by the Council d'Agglomeration, which is effectively controlled by the Ville de Montréal. If you want to remember what the Council d'Agglomeration is in charge of, it's island-wide things that wouldn't make sense for a small municipality like the town of Montréal to have. The town of Montréal isn't going to have its own police, and Montreal East isn't going to have its own buses. So the STM and the SPVM are overseen by the Council d'Agglomeration. Laval, though, own police, own buses. The next largest is the Communauté Métropolitaine de Montréal, which is hard to say out loud. One, 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 two, Kid can't even read. Two. This is uh, all the communities on the island of Montreal, as well as the communities surrounding the island. We're talking about Laval and the South Shore, and usually extending out about as far as the commuter rail lines. It's basically all the governments that need to cooperate with each other for the region to work economically. This is why, among other things, this group has half the control of the ARTM, along with the provincial government. The population of this is about 3.9 million, which will sound a little low to those people who follow these sorts of things. Why? Because the final and largest definition of Montreal is the census metropolitan area. And this is basically what StatsCan defines as Greater Montreal. So if you take the Communauté Metropolitaine de Montréal, <laughs> Today, Junior! <laughs> Take away Saint Jean Baptiste, a few other places, and then add 11 other municipalities. That gives you a total population of 4.1 million. It's fairly similar to the CMM, but more meaningful for the census, not the political system. This can make things a bit confusing because both the political entity of the CMM and the StatsCan entity of the CMA get called Greater Montreal. The two numbers are similar, but not quite the same. People almost always go with a StatsCan number because in the end, it's just so much work to piece together data when StatsCan doesn't do it for you. One other annoying thing is just about every census, they seem to add a few municipalities to the CMA. For example, the population of the CMA was 3.6 million in 2006 and 4.1 million in 2016. So you think, whoa, great growth rate. But at least 100,000 of that was just down to deciding to recategorize these outlying towns as being part of the CMA. So why does this matter? Well, basically we track the census metropolitan area and the ville, but the agglomeration de Montréal, the island, is called the Montreal Territoire Equivalent by StatsCan, which means it's often not what journalists find and use. So often when people write about Montreal and bring up statistics, they're not talking about what many Montrealers consider to be Montreal. There's also a very big difference between 2 million people and 4 million people. I mean, a large employer wants to know how many workers there are. A band touring might come to a 4 million person city, but not a 2 million person city. And city planners also need to know what is growing. For example, we know that the island is growing at around 3%, but off-island is growing at 5%. There's also a difference between the people who live in Montreal North and the people who live in Chambly. Cow. Poverty and wealth tends to concentrate, so housing policy, for example, needs to target different neighborhoods to spread people out. 
But these decision makers in society pale in comparison to the most important decision maker. You. To stay informed, most of us read the news and talk to friends and we complain and write letters hmm. and sign petitions and we like and tweet and all that stuff. And ultimately, we vote for what we want. And the political class nervously watches all of this going on. And they try to give us what we want so that we'll vote for them next time around. It's a bit of a de facto direct democracy when enough people complain, as seen during the COVID outbreak where public outcry meant that the daily statistical reporting resumed after it had been called off. But if you don't know about these three different definitions of Montreal, you're gonna be uninformed. You probably already knew, but if you didn't, just from watching this video, you now know that despite their name, the SPVM, the Service de Police de la Ville de Montréal, aren't just the police for the Ville de Montréal, they're police force for the whole island. So when you see this article about over-policing, for example, you know to check that he's using a number of about two million. Because if he isn't, you know something else. This guy might be deceiving you, or incompetent. So let's see. Great. Meanwhile, over here, this article talks about a more urban Canada. But the story of Montreal is of a more suburban Montreal. Because the growth rate is far higher in the off-island suburbs than it is on the island. This article is making the argument that Montreal is too diverse for the CAQ and says that 34% of Montreal is a visible minority. But that is the Ville de Montréal, which few people consider to be Montreal. If you take the island, only 32.9% of people are visible minorities. And if you take Greater Montreal, it's a way wider 22.6%. Here's another even more confusing example. This article talks about significant gains in bilingualism. Montreal, where 55.3% of residents are bilingual, compared to 54.3% in 2011. I wanted to figure out where this came from. Well, it wasn't the Ville, which is 57.4% bilingual, or the island, which is 59.1% bilingual, or the CMA, which is 55.1%. It's actually what the CMA was before an error was found in the census. Taking the narrative of the story from being a massive resurgence of English to being a flat and actually declining usage of English in the province. Have the news outlets corrected the story so as not to trigger a fairly understandable fear of language loss amongst Quebecois whose fear of losing their language is so strong that it defined Quebec's politics for an entire generation? No, because journalistic integrity only extends as far as correcting your own mistakes, it seems. <gasps> if you're having some argument with your friend at a bar about if English is in decline or if French is in decline, there are literally 10 articles from reputable outlets letting you argue it either way. There is one truth though, and that's something you'll only know if you understand some basics on statistics in the region. So this gets to the problem that you have to be wary of, as a Montrealer. The three Montreals mean that anyone with a narrative has three statistics to choose from. We all know this, right? You're having a debate about something like, is Montreal becoming more angry? You'll always have one number that is more favorable than the others for your point. Watch me now wade stupidly into Montreal's Number one debate again. Here's one I've heard a lot. People will say, West Island, those guys are all Anglophones. And a lot of people hear that and say, yeah, like quarter of Montreal is English. And although those municipalities that didn't join the Ville de Montréal are very Anglophone, and almost all in the West Island, with over 50% mostly speaking English at home, the thing is only 23% of Islanders speak English at home, and only 15% of Montreal is in the CMA. But there's much bigger downsides than your buddy in the bar who has some narrative about Montreal. Both news columnists and politicians use statistics to play on your fears and beliefs. For me, when a nationalist brings up the island instead of the CMA to make a point about language loss, or a liberal voter brings up the Ville de Montréal to make a point about the diversity of Montreal, I'm like, bullshit detected. Why did this person have to use this statistic to make their point? Was their argument not that strong? So ultimately for me, after thinking about it quite a bit, I see Montreal as 4 million people, with 2 million on the island and 2 million off the island, because it's a fully integrated economy with even more rapid transit links being built. You know, it's not like we're still paddling across the Saint Laurent in a boat. Also, over time, people in Laval and on the South Shore have become pretty hard to distinguish from any other Montrealer. They prefer speaking French, but are very bilingual. 
diverse and much more like Montrealers than the people from the regions of Quebec. It's fun to tease off island places, but the truth is, if we were just a city of 2 million people, we would be pretty irrelevant by global standards. But regardless of what you think Montreal is, always make sure that you're talking about the same Montreal with the other person. Because they can be two vastly different things. And at the very least, knowing the difference between the three Montreals will stop you from getting into a stupid argument with some guy at a bar. Something that I know all too well. Because both the political entity of the Communauté Metropolitan Man, it's not fair. It's fairly similar to the Communauté Metropolitan. <laughs> it's fairly similar. It's fairly similar to the CMM. 